We're Scott and Jay Naylor from Consult Motorhomes and this is our road trip on the Costa del Sol. We're heading across from the Costa Blanca uh, via Granada which is around about 20 miles or so that way and we're heading down now to the Costa del Sol. This is a service area where we stayed last night. There are some campsites in and around Granada but this is the back end of December and they are closed so this was our overnight stop as we now head down south to the Costa del Sol. So we've landed down on the Costa del Sol and we're parked up in one of our favourite spots in the marina. Handy for all the bars and restaurants. It's New Year's Eve, so I should imagine it's quite going to be quite lively down there a bit later on. But this is the perfect location just to enjoy some nice Spanish winter sunshine in a really pleasant setting. We've moved further down the coast to Fuengarola um, and we're staying at the port. Uh, it's more of a port than a marina here at Fuengarola. So we've managed to find a nice little spot. There are a couple of other larger motorhomes here. Uh, with 18 euros a night for the parking or 18 euros for 24 hours. Uh, it does keep it reasonably free, so there's usually plenty of space to park at this time of year in January. So, you see Fuengarola to the right, and also another major part of Fuengarola to the left from here as well, but the port is fairly central, so it gives you access to all the bars and restaurants. So this is actually the working part of the port here where you'll see still a very active fishing port and there's lots of fresh fish coming in for the restaurant so, uh, so it's more of a port, a fishing port although there is a part of this that is still classed as a marina which is over that way uh, but compared to Benalmadena which is only maybe five, ten miles down the coast at the most. It's got a completely different feel even though it's still very, very close. Torremolinos, Benalmadena, Fuengarola. Uh, and although they're all very close, they all do feel very different indeed. So this is quite a central space to stay. Um, you do have to pay, but you don't mind doing that. It's relatively quiet. The CCTV, so it's as secure as you can be. So, yeah, port for Wingarola. We've managed to park between the lines, which is kind of the regulation here. Um, some of the larger motorhomes do spread over uh, two parking spaces, so I don't know what the rules are as regards that. I would think that when it's busy potentially the office will kind of look at you and say well hang on you, you, you're well over your, your guidelines so at 5.4 meters we're kind of just within there I think I'll probably be able to argue the toss there one of the things that's quite extraordinary about Spain is that even when you're in a car park you can we've always felt that we've been able to use the chocks even though it may seem a little bit cheeky so if you are in a spot where it's not quite level, we just 
put the chocks under and that seems to work nobody's bothered uh, we've seen that quite a lot in Spain so it just means that you've got a level a level spot place called La Linea which is the line effectively between Spain and Gibraltar so you can see the big rock of Gibraltar in front and um, we're headed to an air that's on the marina which is just this side of Gibraltar uh, with easy access and very easy to Across the border you can literally walk from the air across the runway uh, and you're straight into Gibraltar. This is the air at La Linea which is just the Spanish side of the border into Gibraltar, you see the rock of Gibraltar over there. The border passport control is just over that direction there, so it's a great place to stay and park. Parking in Gibraltar itself is very, very busy, so this is where most people would prefer to park, stay overnight, and then head over the border into Gibraltar very pleasant evening in January. So this is the runway that separates Spain from Gibraltar. As the planes head out towards that direction there when they take off. Obviously when there's no planes coming this is the main access walkway. You can walk across the runway and the cars travel freely back and forth from Gibraltar to La Linea literally as the planes take off from this direction and land this is your runway so once you cross the border into Gibraltar uh, there's quite a lively social scene here um, lots of bars and restaurants by the marina uh, and of course lots of English shopping so if you're away for a long period of time and you're in Spain and you want a bit of English culture then Gibraltar is never far away. Marbella, probably the most well-known part of the Costa del Sol. Regarded as being quite upmarket. Very popular destination.
We've pulled over for some lunch in Marbella. The parking here is not easy. There's a one-way system which is very, very busy. Um, the beach is just beyond that hotel there. And the town centre itself is just over that way. So even in January, Marbella is still very busy. Uh, and parking is at, at a premium. Um, there are some motorhomes uh, parked in various places, but generally I would say most of the parking is underground, so it's not necessarily motorhome friendly. Uh, but the beach and the town itself uh, is always very lively and very busy. So that's Marbella. So you've got two lanes of traffic going both ways and then side roads to our right going down to the beach. Um, you can see it's quite busy, Christmas decorations still up, uh, mid-January. Um, still very, very busy in uh, Marbella uh, for the time of year. Uh, parking is always at a premium. A lively, almost city feel, um, rather than a, a holiday resort feel. So quite a big city feel. Lots of bars, restaurants. Quite a quite a busy centre. We leave the Costa del Sol behind and head up into the mountains towards Granada where we'll follow the motorway back up through Spain to Santander to catch the ferry back to the UK. From Santander but due to adverse weather conditions the sailing from Santander to Portsmouth uh, was delayed by a day or so so instead we chose to drive up through France and pick up the ferry in Oosterham which is um, classed as can uh, on the Brittany ferries site um, no access to decks at the moment, so we're in our cabin. The weather is due to be uh, quite choppy. This is due to be quite rough as we cross uh, to Portsmouth with uh, approximately uh, five hours, I think. Uh, so we're heading back to the UK. Um, slight detour at the end of the holiday, uh, but hopefully we'll be back few hours safely back in Portsmouth. Awesome. 